Hi, welcome to our video series on infectious disease precautions. In this video, we're going to review contact, droplet, and airborne precautions. All right, so let's start off with a simple question. What are transmission precautions in healthcare? Well, transmission precautions in healthcare are very specific procedures to prevent the transmission of infectious microorganisms. And you know, we've got these three kinds contact, droplet, and airborne. Now here are the CDC posters. They kind of outline the differences, and you'll often see these very posters posted outside of the rooms of the patients who are on these types of precautions. Now, if you're taking care of a COVID-19 patient, they're gonna be on all three of these types of precautions, but we'll get to that in just a minute. But first I wanna look at what's the difference between universal or standard precautions and transmission precautions. Universal standard precautions are the basic level precautions that are the minimum standard for all patients. Now the goal is to reduce the risk of transmission of microorganisms or bugs while providing care for patients. So there's four main parts. Now you'll see that hand hygiene is definitely something everyone is stressing, the value and the importance of stopping the transmission of microorganisms. That's our number one. So first, hand hygiene, which is part of universal standard precautions in every one of the three transmission precautions. Next, we're gonna talk about respiratory hygiene or cough etiquette. This means you teach your patients that if they're gonna cough, they wanna cough into a tissue, they don't wanna just cough into the air, because we know that airborne bugs and microorganisms can live like up to six hours in the air and even longer on hard surfaces. So you wanna help your patients if they're not used to doing that, Respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette means they would cough into a tissue. We would throw that tissue away. They would wash their hands. They might cough into the elbow, but we want to make sure they don't just cough into the air. The third piece of the four parts of universal standard precautions is personal protective equipment. Now, whatever is necessary depends on what kind of care is involved with the patient. You might need to wear gloves. You might need to wear a gown if it's gonna get a little messy. It gets very specific with the transmission precautions, but gloves, when you're gonna come in contact with any type of body fluid, are essential. The fourth piece is to dispose of sharps safely. Okay, so there are the four pieces of universal standard precautions, the basic minimum level of care that we expect for anyone involved in patient care. Now, when it comes to the transmission precautions, these are also very specific to how the disease spreads. So different diseases have different parts of these contact precautions. They may have one, two, or all three of them. COVID-19 has all three of these types of precautions. So let's start first looking at contact precautions. Now, hand washing across the board is part of basic universal precautions. It's a part of contact, droplet, and airborne. But let's look at the things that are specific to contact precautions. So besides everyone washing their hands before entering and when leaving the room, providers and staff also need to put on gloves before they go in the room and discard them before they leave. The same thing with the gown, put on the gown before you go in the room and then discard it before you leave. Now an easy way to remember this is that before you go in, you wanna protect yourself. And then before you leave, you don't wanna take those germs back out into the unit. Now, as far as equipment goes, you don't want to share equipment with someone who's in contact precautions and other patients. If you do, you have to meticulously clean that, that equipment in between each patient. But it's better if you can use dedicated equipment, it means this patient on contact precautions is the only one who uses this until they're discharged, or disposable equipment that's used on this patient and then disposed when they're discharged. Now there's some red lettering up there by the gown and this you would think goes without saying, but this is the official CDC poster. They're telling you don't wear the same gown and gloves for the care of more than one person. That's just gross. All right, that's contact precautions. Let's look at droplet precautions. Now again, hand washing, clean your hands before entering and leaving the room. But with droplet precautions, we want to make sure that your eyes, nose, and mouth are carefully covered before you enter the room. So you can either wear a face shield or a goggle like you see in the graphic there. 
you want to remove the face protection before you leave the room, just like we did with the personal protective equipment on contact precautions. Okay, so pause for just a minute. Make sure you're clear on what things are the same or the different with dropper precautions. Okay, so you've got eyewear protecting your eye, nose, and mouth for droplet precautions. That's going to be our most important. But a patient can be on both contact and droplet precautions. Or, as we say with COVID-19, all three. So let's talk about airborne precautions. Everyone cleans their hands, including before and entering and leaving a room. But the N95 respirator is the one that has everybody's attention right now. It's fit tested and it's very close to the face. Now fit tested means there's some a trained evaluator that puts you in a big hood and sees if you can smell things. The goal is they want to make sure that that fit is so good for you personally and individually, it's going to keep you safe. Because N95 respirators are 95% effective in filtering out those nasty things. That's what we want them to do. They're much more effective for airborne precaution patients than a surgical mask would be. Surgical mask doesn't fit tight enough to your face and doesn't filter at the level of effectiveness that an N95 would do. But look at the difference in airborne precautions than from contact and droplet. You don't remove the respirator until after you've exited the room and closed the door. On this one, that could be hanging around in the air in their room. So you want to walk out, shut the door, then take your N95 respirator off. And remember, the door to a room of a patient who has airborne precautions has to remain closed. So let's wrap up this video. Precautions are specific procedures intended to minimize the risk of transmitting infectious organisms. Standard precautions are a minimum set of procedures to be used with all patients. Transmission precautions include contact, droplet, and airborne specific recommendations, and these are based on how the specific disease is transmitted. Hey, thanks for watching this video with us today.